Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hope your day is going truly fantastic. We are live from the sukkah on this gorgeous Wednesday evening, pretty heavy breeze in the background. There was actually wind warnings today, up to 50 miles an hour expected. And this is the Kosher Wine Review. I'm Yoshu Worth with my wife's amazing I'm going to take a bite of my wife's amazing soup after saying a moti lechem with some salt from the Himalayas, raw honey. we got to get some of this Bar Hill honey, Bar Hill, from uh, Vermont. Stuff is incredible. They make, um, they also make gin and vodka made from raw honey, like fermented raw honey, like med. This is raw honey from Drimia, which also makes some incredible wine out of Eretz Israel. Some people call it the Shtachim, but uh, I call it Judea and Samaria. Hmm. Hmm. So we're going to review four whites and a red this evening. Hmm. Got these cool crackers. Uh, they call them fiber crisp bread from Scandinavia. Product of Norway. Fun stuff. Layered in with my wife's Incredible spelt spelled challah. Two thousand ten, Chardonnay, Western Australia, Joseph River Estate. On the banks of the Harvey River, or views of the scenic Darling Ranges. I'm going to have to look into more of that. A small amount of French oak. 13% alcohol. One is no longer made that I know of. And it's Mavushal. Just slide that over there. Yeah. It's backwards, forwards. Back label. Mr. Buggy. Mr. Day Long Legs. You're not allowed. Okay, let's give this a smell. Well, I have to tell you, for a 10-year-old Chardonnay and a screw top, yeah, buddy. Super citrusy for a Chardonnay. Super citrusy. With almost like a sweet fungal kind of thing going on. I'm intrigued. Let's give this a taste. Okay. 
Okay. So, what's the most exciting thing that you've ever done with a wine? Did you pair it with chocolate? Did you pair it with steak? Did you pair it with a soup, a salad, with fish, with sushi? Totally leave that message here. This wine. Wow. Mmm. It's gorgeous, like lime core. Just gorgeous. Brilliant acid. Totally standing up as if it's just like fresh as a daisy. I'd say this wine's going to go for another like three, four more years. I don't know how, but it is. Going to have to ask my source if they have more of these. I mean, I'm shocked. Shocked. Goodness. Let's taste it in a second glass here. And the citrus is just like, wow. But it's dry. Mm. The flavor is just beautiful. Now, you know what? No, I'll take that back. On the finish. Okay. Year or two. Maybe two years. Drink this, like right when you open it up. Finish it within the next, uh, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour. Mm. Works really good with my chicken soup. Really well. Let's try it with these crackers. Test out things. Have fun with it. Like, go with it. Put a bunch of options on the table. One of my favorite things to do about learning about wine and tasting wine is like grab every herb in your wife or girlfriend or sister or mom's cabinet. Lay down like 20 herbs. Be like, you know, that's how I learned a lot about my comparative noting flavor kind of ideas. Because the more you taste, The more you can express yourself. Oh, honey, a lot of wind. Mm. Mm. Okay, moving on. Next one. Shocker. Surprise. Let's do the Southern White from Midbar. Ramat Negev, thirteen point five percent alcohol. This is um, another Israeli wine, not Bavushal. And I have no idea the blend. I'll have to look it up. Again, 13.5% alcohol. Oh, I know some of the winemakers and promoters and marketers don't like when I do that. Because see, if you cut off the top, it leaves the little, you know, kind of name on there. So it's like, you know, kind of looks cool, but no. I had this wine about two years ago. It's a 2016. I think I had an older vintage. Midbar is definitely known for their whites. There's a winemaker who used to kind of run the show there with its winemaking skills, Yakov Oria. There's different people there now. If you don't know who he is, look him up. Alpha Omega. So this is the... I'm going to have almost back. Joseph River steps up to the plate, rocks it. Good little 90 point, 91 point score on a 10 year old bottle of Chardonnay. Hello. Okay. So, Negev, desert, straight up desert. Okay. Basically, what you're talking about is low amounts of water, high heat, and dry. Cool nights, Mediterranean air. And let's go to town. There's our label for everybody. Doo -doo. Mid bar white. Don't drip on the computer. Okay. Scan that out. Scan that out. Okay, we'll go in order there. First one. This is going to be the 
Sauvignon Blanc next. Let's open up the red in advance. Yes, we're taking that thing off again. Okay. Super like doing tastings at home. It's a lot less pressure, you know. In the store, I manage a store called The Grapevine in Wesley Hills. In the store, you know, literally two minutes, five minutes max. And then, Baruch Hashem, thank God, people come in the store and go shopping. So it's like, hold on one second. Let me finish this, you know, video thing. But you really can't do that. You can't really make people wait. So it's not nice. Um, what I like to do, because there's bugs out here, because they're chasing after my wife's food. Huh, it's funny. Um, is you got to put like a little, little pluggy on here. Just a little, little screen here. Look, it's a cape. It's a superhero wine guy. But no kidding. Let's move on to this mid bar. Mmm. Tropical. feel like someone just like got off the plane in Hawaii. I uh, Someone put a lay of flowers around my neck. I'm looking at tons of, you know, uh, you know, rainforest and volcanoes. You know, exotic flowers. And pretty fat, juicy, fruity wine from the get-go. And yes, I'm smelling from three different glasses. So I really want to know what's going on here. And I find if you're smelling from one glass, no matter how good it is, and leave you kind of monotone. And I want to give a range of descriptions and flavors. interesting with the tropical a little bit of apricot kind of twist that skin vibe going on let's give this a taste kind of rough up mm. Mm. different one very different one Hmm. I'm going to describe this one. A little musty. Kind of like seashore. You're kind of looking at the sea anemone in the water. You're stepping across the rocks with the moss on them. And there's this tropical element right at the seashore. Little driftwood, little mustiness, funky. It's a funky one. Watch out for the um, pine cone needles. Hmm. Very funky wine. Pretty straight pour now. Tropical, you know, lava rock, seashore, rainforest. I'd like to see a little more acid, but I like it. Mm. It's almost like a little creamy element. Works good with the food. Don't forget your wife's food. Hmm. Okay. All right. That's the desert. Midbar. 13.5% alcohol. It's 
Southern White from the Negev. Ramat Negev 2016. All right, moving on. We're going to Cali. Hagafen, one of the most award-winning wineries in the world. And I mean that. These guys are winning awards, left, right, and center. This Sauvignon Blanc has been one of my all-time, heh, <laughs> 1979, family owned. Been one of my all-time absolute favorite white wines, if not best Sauvignon Blanc almost every single year. 2019, I have not tasted this vintage yet. I mean, we're talking, this was harvested one year ago. This is fresh, 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 fresh wine. California, Ernie Ware. Michael on the Somalier vibes. Mrs. Ware, definitely Irit, definitely complete and total partner in the entire enterprise. Baruch Hashem, thank God, their winery survived the fires from a couple of years ago. If you would have seen around their building and their crushing facility, it's it's a nest. It's a miracle that like it survived. Right when you come up to the winery, you see the flames just like rip right into the first part of the red vineyards in front of the winery, and then just kind of bailed out the flames. Sauvignon Blanc, twenty nineteen. How much alcohol we got going on here? This is seventy two percent Napa County and twenty eight percent Sonoma, and we've got here alcohol level of. 13% alcohol. 100% Sauvignon Blanc. I mean, it's, it is a blood, just clear looking liquid there. Minimal color. I mean, not even straw. Not even, not even, dude. Not even. More like sponge. <laughs> or like sea anemone or, or like, like, I mean, that is just clear liquid running there. Even like, you know, what, what would you call it? Jellyfish. So what I call it this color. This is jellyfish color. McGoffin. There we go. A little picture action going on there. Beautiful. Okay. Moving on. Let's get a smell. Quince, cat pee, please don't get upset at that. It's all in good faith, and it's right. Wow. Like sweet grass, and I don't mean like wheat grass. Wheat grass is a little bit more bitter. Sweet grass. Like you're walking through blades like on a spring day and it's just gorgeous and it's all around you and it's sunny and it's bright and it's floral. Mm. Big fruit. Minerally, stream, brook. And just like bright, almost like menthol bright, but you know, none of the anise character. Going for the taste. Mm. Oh. Dude, the flavor coming. Just drive like a freight train right into your palate and then just like soft waves on the ocean there or like that brook you know beautiful stream at, that's settled down after the spring thaw you know coming down there the moss is going on real bright happy spring floral action stony 
and just clean, literally like you didn't even drink the wine at the end, and you're completely going back to neutral, even though the flavor just rode you through so beautifully. Wow. 2019 Sauvignon Blanc. 72% Apple County. Oh, this wine's great. 28% Sonoma County. Ernie, Liat, Irit. And Michael, you guys are just ripping it to shreds. My goodness, that's awesome. I hope that wins a ton of awards. Moving on back to Israel. This is the Viognier from Galil Mountain Winery. Yeah, okay. There's their logo. Yeah. Remix. 2018 from the galley, 100% Viognier, a little bit of oaking, says it can age two to three years, serve between 54 and 57 degrees, and Micha Vaadia, winemaker, 13.5% alcohol, and Galil Mountain, two years ago, had a wine read, I think, wine spectator, wine advocate, as the number top 100 wines of the entire world. They are not talking about just kosher either. This year, we're going to check out and see what's happening with all their ratings, backgrounds, and scorings. It says it's vegan, which means they're not using... Gosh, that was good. Oof. Hard to pour out wine sometimes, dude. Wow. I mean, you want to move on, but... Okay, how's the blend? Pretty good. Viognier is just a beautiful grape that is used also in blending up to like 5-6% in many top-notch red wines from around the world. Do not be timid of this grape by itself. It's got some stunning elements. I mean, you can go with anchovies, you go with spicy foods, you go with salads. Dry wine. But I have a feeling this fruit's going to be gigantic. Or as my kids read this book called The Gyvantic. For Gyva is like, you know, if you have too much ego. But this is gigantic. Give it a smell. Galil Mountain Viognier 2018. Oh. Woohoo! 180 degree. Turn around. Flip around. Nowhere near any one of these wines in any way, shape, or form at all. Goodness, there's some like funky filled, you know, candies with these crusty candies with this. What, what is that? Oh, like like a juicy filling on it, like an amazingly exotic candy. Hmm. I'd put this selection up against many four wine combinations from around the world. Two Israel, one California, one Australia. Mm, kosher wines, but wow. All right. A little bit of lychee action going on here. But just like full power. It's like someone turning on the gas and forgetting to turn the flame on. You're like, whoa, that's a little bit strong. You know, I don't know if, you know, dude, shut that off. It's dangerous. It's kind of a racy wine, like a little, it's a little bit dangerous, this wine. We're going to bite of my wife's soup again here before we go in. Mm. 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 My wife loves rocking the bone broths, dude. Let those things cook for like 24 hours. Just a little simmer. All right. 
חייב רחב. Okay, that's just like totally different. That's some serious acid, but it doesn't like bite you. It's just present. And it's just riding there. A little citrus undertone there. So this has got like that apricot core, the nuttiness to it. Fruity, nutty, racy. But easy. Very easy. Has some edible flower things going on there. Super mild spice at the finish. Did it have? Yeah. The oak is there, but it's like kind of chilling way off. Like you're kind of looking over at the pier, you know, a hundred yards down the road and you're going, oh yeah, that's there on the beach. Really rides through well. Yeah. I love this with like some spicy tuna rolls. Cool. Love it. High 80s on this one. The nose is like 94. You want to smell a wine for about 12 hours? This is it. Light wine. Very easy going, dude. You know, this might actually be a transition for people. It's not going to bite you. Beautiful transition line for those people coming out of the, the semi-dry, needing that little bit of residual sugar, but the fruit is so clean. It's different, too. Very different. All right, moving on to Mr. Red. Shilo. Award winner here, Petit Syrah 2017. Watch out for some decanter awards there. I mean, all these wines are winning awards in my book tonight. Call me goofy, call me obnoxious, call me an over promoter, but you know what? I feel like I picked out some good wines this evening. 15.5% alcohol. How you doing? This is 18 months in French, new French oak barrels. And only the most select were chosen for the release. I don't think they put out a ton of this wine, actually. They might as well just numbered this puppy. Shimon Chomer, the proprietor, and Ami Khaluri, we love you. I think we just had a thunderstorm. Okay, this is a fatty. Another touch of my wife's soup. Mm. As delicious as it is, it's pretty neutral. The wife doesn't put in like 50 different herbs and spices and ketchups and sauces and a little garlic. Onions, chicken, maybe one bay leaf for like this much. Himalayan salt. And a lot of love. So good chicken bones. Don't hurt. Finished brisket. Big, juicy, dark wild berry brisket. I mean, you take the wild berries and like braise them on some charcoal for that matter. Mm. 
But again, a lot of floral components going on here. And you're thinking, but it's just grapes. Well, when you're doing fermentation, you harvest at a certain time, you have the fields located in certain areas surrounded with other plants, you have a winemaker that knows when to choose, to pick, to harvest, to ferment, to barrel. The barrels giving over lots of flavors. Oh, yeah. Just walk in a barrel room of a winery. I mean, this wine literally smells like a phenomenal barrel room. The wood is so beautiful on this wine. Notice the other ones. We're not getting those elements. We're not getting barbecue. We're not getting all that. Yes, it's red. But there are many white wines and or rosés that can have some components similar to some lighter red wines. This is a big powerhouse. Picture like being at the gym working out going, pushing up a huge stack of weights when I'm smelling this wine. I mean, it's like, whoa, intense. They really get a lot, of, lot out of this wine. Israel loves doing like single varietal petite Syrahs in a lot of the world. It's not so crazy popular. We had a, some good ones out of Spain. But blending grape. All right, let's give this a taste. It's been open for about an uh, who we got? Half hour in there? Chaim Bracha. Hmm. When I suck the air through, I'm trying to get more oxygen. Mm. Great balance of wood, acid, and fruit. Nice, long, caring finish. Nice, medium snap of acid. Tannins are, like, so present with the way the wood goes across the upper part of, like, where your tongue rests. And inside the uh, lip area above and here with your tongue. But at the same time, leaving my palate moist. While it's really dry on the tongue at the finish, it's still moist, clean. It's like just calling for, please pair me with like buffalo. <laughs> Big brisket. beef stew and some heavily braised barbecue seared you know bring it all the way to the well done mode of the meat spectrum and some huge core flavors that kind of resonate really well in that middle part of, you know, you get a swallow, and you're like, oh, there's a release of flavor. It's dry and tannic, though. It's like it's got some real, you know, tannins up in there. And really dry and really woody on the, on the back end of the finish. This wine's crazy young. It's a 2017, 15.5% alcohol. This is the Shilo Secret Reserve 2017 Petite Syrah. We're going to have, a, get rid of these pine needles. We have a little more of the Drimia honey, a little more challah. We're going to wish you the most extraordinary night, most beautiful day. We've got Hoshana Rabbah coming up for all those people in Israel. And here we have another full day of sukkahs tonight and today. There are fabrengans going on for those people that know how to wear a mask or space themselves out. Please be safe with Corona. I'm so not anti-mask, but what's the big deal about wearing one inside of a close building? Or, um, or if you're in synagogue, davening, or shul, it's really not that big of a deal. Mm. Mm -hmm. Ninety-three, 
It's a good selection of wines. I mean, it's show worth. What are you doing to enjoy your day? It's the Kosher Wine Review. Love to you, your family, and friends. And uh, ask them what's cracking in that brain and share love.